there, welcome back. So today let's talk about procrastination. Are you a master procrastinator? Have you ever had this like thing that you really have to do and you find yourself doing everything but that thing? <laughs> Lately, I have been battling a serious case of procrastination-itis with this one particular project. And it's weird because it's not huge and it's not particularly hard. It's just not something I wanna do. And every time that I decide I'm gonna work on it so that I can get that done, there's this email that I need to respond to or this great TED talk that I wanna watch or wow, that shelf is really dusty. I better get at that. And what's the most common reason we get give for not getting that one thing done? Not enough time, right? Here's the thing about time. We all get 24 hours in the day and some people spend that time doing amazing things while others bounce between a million distractions, largely avoiding that one thing for a variety of reasons. Maybe if you're a failure or it's, we just don't know how to get started or it's overwhelming, but we all get to justify our choices and often with that not enough time excuse. Soon is not a time and one of these days is not a plan. But we all do it and it impacts our happiness and our future success and studies show that one in five of us is a pro chronic procrastinator. Scientists explain procrastination with a concept called time inconsistency or present bias. And it just means that we tend to give stronger weight to payoffs that are closer to us in the present time. And the farther into the future the reward is, the less value we tend to put on it, even when the value is exactly the same. See, when our brain makes long-term plans like losing weight or writing a book, it's kind of like you're making those plans for someone else, your future self. When the time comes to actually take action on that plan that you had made earlier, it's not your future self anymore, it's your present self. And your present self likes instant gratification. Your present self likes it wants what it wants when it wants it. And this is one of the reasons why you might go to bed determined to get up at 5.30 and get that workout in, you know, before you start your day. But when the alarm goes off, the snooze button wins. It's a battle between the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. And the limbic system is also known as the instant gratification seeker. And it lives in the now and it loves pleasure and reward. And it's one of the most dominant parts of the brain. The prefrontal cortex is the rational decision maker, and this is the part of the brain that can visualize the future and plan and reason and see the benefits of reaching your goals and the consequences of not. And we'd all like to think that our rational decision maker is in charge all of the time, but studies show that your default mode is your instant gratification seeker and 80% of our judgments and decisions happen in the subconscious. Without intention, we always want our present self to be happy. Now that you know how procrastination works, the next step is figuring out how to outsmart it. The good news is I can tell you how. Check out my blog post for more neuroscience of procrastination and some specific strategies to keep your rational decision maker in charge. If you enjoyed this neuro nugget, pass it on to someone in your corner of the world because life is always better when you share the good stuff.